Summary of Poem O Captain My Captain by Walt Whitman O Captain My Captain by Walt Whitman is a poem that uses the image of a ship and its captain to represent a larger story. The poem was written in the aftermath of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and it reflects the nation's grief over losing a great leader. The poem describes a ship returning from a long and dangerous journey. The ship represents the United States, and the journey symbolizes the Civil War, which was a difficult and bloody conflict. The captain of the ship represents Abraham Lincoln, who led the country through this challenging time. The poem has three stanzas, each showing the contrast between the joy of the ship's safe return and the sorrow of the captain's death. In the first stanza, the speaker celebrates the end of the fearful trip. The ship has survived all the challenges and achieved its goal, which makes the people on shore very happy. However, the joy is overshadowed by the fact that the captain has died. The speaker is heartbroken, symbolized by the repeated exclamation Oh heart! 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 and the sight of the captain lying dead on the deck. In the second stanza, the speaker calls out to the captain, asking him to rise and see the celebrations in his honor. The flag is being waved, the trumpet is sounding, and the people are eagerly waiting for the captain. But despite all the calls and celebrations, the captain does not respond. The speaker expresses disbelief, wishing it was all a bad dream, but he knows it's real because the captain is cold and dead. In the final stanza, the speaker faces the reality of the captain's death. The captain does not answer, and he is lifeless. Although the ship has safely reached its destination, and the journey is over, the speaker feels profound sorrow. The people on shore are celebrating the victory, but the speaker mourns the loss of the captain. He walks sadly on the deck where the captain lies, feeling the weight of the tragedy. Overall, the poem is about the mixed emotions of triumph and loss. It honors Abraham Lincoln's leadership and mourns his death, showing how his assassination left the nation both victorious and heartbroken. Line-by-line -line explanation of the poem O Captain My Captain by Walt Whitman The poem O Captain My Captain by Walt Whitman is a deeply emotional tribute to the fallen leader, Abraham Lincoln, following the end of the Civil War. The opening line, O Captain, My Captain, Our fearful trip is done immediately sets the tone of deep respect and sorrow. The speaker addresses the captain with reverence, reflecting the profound impact of his leadership. The phrase fearful trip symbolizes the challenges and dangers faced during the Civil War, and the use of our indicates a shared, collective experience between the speaker and the captain. The conclusion, is done, signals the end of this dangerous journey reflecting an emotional tone that marks both the end of struggle and the beginning of reflection on loss. In the second line, the ship has weathered every rack, the prize we sought is won, the ship serves as a metaphor for the United States, which has endured numerous obstacles. The prize symbolizes the successful preservation of the Union, celebrating the accomplishment despite the struggles endured. This line highlights the endurance, resilience, and perseverance throughout the journey indicating that the outcome of their efforts is positive. As we move to the third line, the port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting, the approaching harbor signifies the journey's end and safety. The celebratory bells represent public joy and relief at the war's end, while the imagery of people celebrating on the shore paints a vivid picture of collective rejoicing. The proximity of the port symbolizes the end of the journey and the beginning of a hopeful new chapter for the nation. The fourth line, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring, highlights the ship's resilience and bravery through steady navigation. The description grim and daring underscores the seriousness and courage required during the journey. This line sets up a contrast between the ship's successful journey and the captain's fate, emphasizing the vessel's determined course and acknowledging the dangerous challenges faced. In the fifth line, but oh heart heart heart, the speaker's repeated cry conveys intense grief, signaling a shift in focus from external celebration to internal sorrow. The repetition emphasizes the profound sense of loss felt by the speaker, highlighting the deep emotional connection to the captain and expressing the immediate impact of the loss. The sixth line, oh the bleeding drops of red, 
symbolizes the physical and emotional scars of the journey. The imagery of blood conveys the cost of the struggle, highlighting the sacrifices made by those who fought. This vivid image emphasizes the conflict's toll and the heavy price paid. In the seventh line, where on the deck my captain lies, the captain's presence on the deck personalizes the tragic loss. The personal connection underscores the captain's importance to the speaker, emphasizing the gravity of the captain's death and highlighting the scene of loss with emotional weight. The eighth line, fallen cold and dead, captures the finality of the captain's demise. The word fallen suggests that the captain has succumbed to his wounds, while cold and dead emphasizes the stark reality of death. This line reinforces the sense of lasting sorrow despite the victory, highlighting the personal tragedy amid broader success. In the ninth line, O oh captain my captain rise up and hear the bells, the speaker desperately wishes for the captain's presence. The celebratory bells reflect public honor and recognition, but the speaker struggles to accept the captain's death, hoping the captain can still be honored. This line highlights the speaker's internal emotional conflict. The tenth line, rise up for you the flag is flung for you the bugle trills, continues to urge the captain to join the celebration. The flag and bugle represent symbols of honor and recognition, emphasizing the speaker's desire for the captain's presence and highlighting his significant role. This plea reflects the deep emotional need for the captain. In the eleventh line, for you bouquets and ribboned wreaths for you the shores are crowding, bouquets and wreaths symbolize admiration and respect. The crowded shores reflect widespread appreciation, contrasting public joy with the speaker's personal mourning and indicating the captain's broad impact. The twelfth line, for you they call, the swaying mass, their eager faces turning, depicts an enthusiastic crowd calling for the captain, showing widespread appreciation for his achievements. The swaying mass and eager faces emphasize public excitement, contrasting with the speaker's private mourning and highlighting the public's desire to honor the captain. In the thirteenth line, here Captain Dear Father, the speaker refers to the captain affectionately as Dear Father, indicating a deep personal bond and reverence. This line highlights the profound loss and suggests a relationship that transcends mere leadership, conveying the depth of the speaker's sorrow. The fourteenth line, this arm beneath your head, describes a final act of care, supporting the captain's head. This focus on personal loss amid public joy emphasizes the speaker's devotion and intimate connection, reflecting deep sorrow. In the fifteenth line, it is some dream that on the deck, the speaker expresses disbelief and hope that the death is merely a dream. This conveys shock and denial, highlighting the depth of grief and the struggle to accept reality, suggesting a wish for the nightmare to end. The sixteenth line, you've fallen cold and dead, confirms the captain's lifeless state, reinforcing the permanence of the loss. This line deepens the emotional weight of the poem, bringing the speaker's grief into sharp relief and highlighting the lasting sorrow despite the victory. The seventeenth line, my captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still, notes the captain's lack of response, emphasizing the lifeless state. The description pale and still underscores the reality of death, intensifying the speaker's sorrow and reinforcing the finality of the demise. In the eighteenth line, my father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse nor will, the speaker describes the complete absence of life, emphasizing the finality and helplessness felt. The personal reference to the captain as my father highlights the personal nature of the grief and the sense of powerlessness. The nineteenth line, the ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done, signifies that the ship is safely anchored, marking the journey's end. This completion contrasts with the personal tragedy of the captain's death, emphasizing the bittersweet nature of the victory and the irony of success amid personal loss. In the twentieth line, from fearful trip the victor ship comes in with object one, the speaker describes the successful outcome of the journey. The triumph underscores the accomplishment and victory, contrasting with the speaker's personal loss, and highlighting the complex emotions of triumph and sorrow. The twenty-first line, exult o shores, and ring o bells, calls for public celebration and ringing of bells. This reflects public joy and the desire to honor the achievement, contrasting with the speaker's private mourning and emphasizing the communal aspect of the celebration, 
highlighting the emotional conflict. In the 22nd line, but I with mournful tread, the speaker walks with deep personal grief. Despite the public joy, the speaker is filled with sorrow, focusing on personal loss. The contrast between exult and mournful tread reflects the speaker's heavy emotional burden. The 23rd line, walk the deck my captain lies, depicts the speaker walking the deck where the captain lies. This intimate connection emphasizes the personal nature of the morning, reflecting the speaker's devotion and sorrow, and bringing the reality of the captain's death into focus. Finally, the 24th line, fallen cold and dead, reiterates the permanence of the captain's death. This somber conclusion highlights the deep emotional impact of the loss, emphasizing the lasting sorrow felt by the speaker and reinforcing the stark reality of the captain's demise. About the Poet Walt Whitman was born on May 31, 1819, in West Hills, New York. He is celebrated as one of America's most influential poets, often referred to as the father of free verse. Whitman's groundbreaking work, Leaves of Grass, first published in 1855, revolutionized American poetry with its innovative style and themes. The collection, which he revised throughout his life, reflects his beliefs in democracy, nature, love, and the human spirit. Whitman's poetry often celebrates the individual and the collective experience, capturing the essence of the American spirit. During the Civil War, he served as a volunteer nurse, and his experiences profoundly influenced his later works, including drum taps. Whitman's embrace of a diverse and inclusive vision of America has left a lasting legacy. He died on March 26, 1892, in Camden, New Jersey, leaving behind a body of work that continues to inspire and resonate with readers worldwide. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.